Hello, we are here talking to Dr. Cheng Si Wang, a leading expert from Forrester about cloud computing and security. Thank you, Dr. Wang. Thank you. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is cloud computing. There is a lot of buzz about cloud computing. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on cloud computing and its applicability to, applicability to businesses? So um, we actually written extensively about cloud computing and its relevance to enterprise businesses. Um, our position is cloud computing is, is a great tool uh, for extending your businesses, extending your enterprise computing for the reason that um, capacity planning and uh, you know, uh, to balance time to market with the, uh, the planning of resources internally, to do it uh, entirely internally in this global economy is, is very difficult. So uh, utilizing cloud computing or third-party service providers to augment your resource planning, augment your um, time to market pressure is a great business tool. Got it. In terms of business adoption, mm -hmm. where do you think the market is and what technical factors will help the adoption grow? Um, so we talked a little bit today in my talk about consumerization of enterprises. One of the major factors, I think, uh, for cloud computing to be uh, uh, more widely adopted by businesses is to support uh, enterprise management needs, such as control of data, uh, control of policies, being able to uh, give businesses visibility of activities um, and confidence that their policies are being enforced, their data is being kept confidential, and their service level agreement is being met. Got it. Mm -hmm. And among the many IT services that c customers can adopt, one of the things that we hear from our customers mm -hmm. is email security, archiving, or easy wins for mm -hmm. the IT organization to show how cloud computing can benefit them. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on, do you see this trend or do you see the next set of things coming Absolutely. along? Absolutely. I think, I think email security is a no-brainer. Um, so I have customers, um, a large financial services firm gets 15 million um, emails a day and over 14 million of which uh, is pure junk, right? Yeah. So why do you even need to put a, an on-premise server and process that 14 million uh, messages, although you know, most of them you probably do very quick processing, but you still have to accommodate the computing resources to do that. And it's not just uh, you know, 14 million this year, next year maybe 18 million. So you have to continue to invest more resources on premise to deal with the capacity problem. So this is one of the very straightforward uh, business issues, I think, can outsource to a cloud computing ser service provider. Got it. And we have nearly 40,000 businesses do that, and I think this is, uh, we see that as a trend. What are your thoughts on archiving? Are there issues um, that are different than email security? Archiving is slightly uh, more complex because uh, email security in most times, like, like I said, 14 million of junk email. You're dealing with things you don't want in the first place, yeah. right? Archiving, presumably you're archiving content that you want, exactly. right? So you care about um, how well these, uh, uh, these data is being preserved, uh, their integrity is being uh, ensured, and the way you can access it, or, uh, or e-discovery policies, for instance, you can, your cloud computing provider uh, can enforce that for you. And all these requirements are slightly more complex, just saying, uh, please get rid of uh, unwanted emails for me. So archiving, uh, while it's a little bit more complex, uh, it's again, it's, it's a great uh, application, I think, to think about outsourcing because you may be a company that is in the business of providing, I don't know, um, uh, financial, services. financial service, online banking, okay. and you're really not an, an, uh, an archiving expert. Yeah. Right? You don't have a team of experts running your storage services for archiving purposes, right? So you may want to think about bringing external um, uh, company that, that 
who does this as their business. That's what they do every day, yeah. right? Uh, they are in better position to understand the best practices for archiving, for uh, enforcing the privacy and security of content. Yeah. Um, and I think it's uh, while it's a little bit more complex than, than email security, it's still a worthwhile proposition. Got it. Shifting a topic a little bit, we talked about technology and services, mm -hmm. focusing on the users. We talk in terms of consumer users and business users. Isn't this distinction sort of going away? Aren't we all consumer users and business users at the same time? Yes. Uh, so we are, you know, you and I are both consumers yes. uh, of some consumer applications. We also business users. Um, while today they're still, you know, I see myself uh, having different roles, business users, I use business applications, and, and as a consumer I use different set of applications, primarily because those applications are separate and they provide me disparate experiences. Um, uh, while that is still the case today, I see the line blurring. Um, you know, many uh, people are using iPhone today to access business emails, and this is just an example of consumer technologies increasingly being used for business purposes. So, when you're using the iPhone, are you the consumer, or are you the business user? Right. So, so there's not a clear division there, and and I see this line increasingly getting blurry. Mm -hmm. And uh, as as we talked about today in my in my talk, I think the vision, uh, the eventual vision, is that the consu the the distinction between consumer and business user is going to disappear. Got it. Now, as you know, as a recommendation to Google, as we expand our focus on users mm -hmm. to include all types of users, what would be your recommendation to our product team on key factors to focus on to get our applications adopted by more business users or users in working in enterprises? Key factors. Um, you mean features that the product uh, features, provides? Features, technology, to... framework. You talked about policy management, security. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, are there things that we should be spending more time on? Those are the areas that we are spending time on today. Right. But are there things that comes to your mind that our product team should say, you should take care of this. As so you we talked about policy management, we yeah. talked about security, right? So one of the things we talked about during the talk is identity management. And I think one of the very difficult things is identity management for if you're talking about cloud computing, right? Yes. Uh, if you are a service provider, you typically don't have visibility into people's corporate directories. And I have clients who have, uh, 20 service providers, and their users have to have different user accounts to access these uh, service providers, and it's just, it's just ridiculous, yes. right? So why do I have to do this with, you know, keeping different smart cards, different USB keys to access different services? This has to be more seamless. Mm -hmm. So one, I, uh, one of my pet peeves is the cloud computing <laughs> service providers have to be uh, have to give the more seamless experience to business users. Got so uh, I use you know, Postini's email service. It should be exactly the same as I use my Outlook. Yes. Yeah. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be a disparate experience. Got it. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Chen Si Wang. And I appreciate your time. And Thank I appreciate you. your talk. And that was a great interview. Um, that's it for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.